G'day, in this video we are comparing pairs of common fractions and figuring out which is larger and which is smaller. Let's look at the top example. This is a nice easy one. Two thirds compared to one third. You can tell straight away that this one is bigger because they're all thirds. This one, it, sorry, this on the left is twice as many thirds as that one. Basically, if the number on the bottom or the denominator is the same, all we need to do is compare the top number because we're comparing, as we say, apples with apples. Thirds and thirds. A third is the same size as another third, so if we have two here and one here, that's an easy one. In the second example, the pieces are different sizes. Their denominators are different. We have fourths or quarters and sevenths. And so that makes it uh, more difficult straight away. However, we have the same number of them. So this is three quarters or fourths. This is three sevenths. So if we knew what one quarter was compared to one seventh, we would know the answer between three quarters and three sevenths. So in other words, if the numerators are the same, the number on the top, we can think carefully about the number on the bottom. What do we know about common fractions? As the denominator gets bigger, what happens to the pieces? They get smaller, don't they? So a seventh is smaller than a quarter or a fourth. Um, a twelfth is smaller than a seventh, a hundredth is smaller again and so on. So as this number gets bigger the pieces get smaller. That means that three quarters must be bigger than three sevenths. Let's look at the next one. Five eighths and eleven twelfths. This is more difficult. The denominators are different, the numerators are different. What are we going to do? The most simple straightforward method is to convert both of them into some fraction where the denominators are the same and then we can compare them. So looking at eighths and twelfths, what fraction can we turn both of those into? What we're looking for is technically called the lowest common multiple. So looking at multiples of eight and multiples of twelve, what's the smallest number that's in both of those lists? So one way to do this is to think, okay, it's eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, forty, etc. And then multiples of 12 are 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and so on. And of course, we can see that 24 is in both lists. So that's a nice, quick and easy method to use for this. So we can convert this one into 24 ths by multiplying by 3. So we'll multiply the 5 by 3. That will give us 15 24 ths. Over here, we can change 12 ths into 24 ths by multiplying top and bottom by 2. That's 22 24 ths. Obviously, 22 is bigger than 15, so our symbol goes that way around. There is another way of thinking about this particular one. If you look at it carefully, you'll see that 11 12 ths is just 1 12 th less than a whole. So it's almost as big as a whole. You could picture that in your mind and think that's only a 12 th less. This one is 5 8 ths. The difference between this and a whole is 3 eighths, so it's like a whole with 3 eighths taken out of it. You could picture this in your mind and think, okay, 3 eighths is about that much. There's my 5 eighths. 11 twelfths is going to look something like that. So almost intuitively or visualizing the fractions in your head, you could have worked that one out without actually converting the fractions. You'd have to find out if that was permitted by your teacher. One last example. We've got different denominators again. We've got a whole number this time. This is a mixed number. And this one is an improper fraction. So 15 is bigger than 4. So it's actually bigger than a whole. So we need to do some changes here. Now, of course, we could convert these both into the same denominator, convert them into twelfths. But before we do that, we can actually see that this one here is bigger than that one because 15 fourths or quarters is the same as three and three quarters. It's got three holes. This has only got one hole, so clearly the one on the right is larger. So that's how we do it. There's a range of different methods we can use here. The focus that I want you to have is to think about the sizes of the pieces involved, and that will help you really understand what you're doing, rather than using some sort of mechanical process. And that's it.